is that the other thing is that we need to make a very strong distinction between what I would term the historical meaning of Vatican II and the theological meaning of Vatican II. Here's what I mean by that. The historical meaning of Vatican II is the way that Vatican II was viewed in the time that it was presented to the world, to the faithful, uh, its implementation, its practical results, all these different historical things, the the way the things that people did at the council, all the different machinations, the controversies, the way the media had the council, all these different things that happened at and after the council are its historical meaning. What happened as a result of the council historically? Now, that can be totally divorced from its his, his theo theological meaning because theology, this theo theological meaning is what's going to happen in 500 years. In 500 years, there's going to be a theological meaning of Vatican II, which has nothing to do with the history now or then, because it has everything to do with the way that theology interprets the text of the Vatican II. So in, in, in other words, it's, it's like totally abstract from the world of the 1960s and everything that happened. In the first sense, there's sort of a heretical meaning of Vatican II because it's mm -hmm. everything that happened, all the, the hot, like I'm sitting in my pew in 1965, in comes a hot side Jesuit and he says, we're going to destroy these statues because of Vatican II. And I'm like, what the heck? What are you talking about? My grandfather sacrificed and, and bled to immigrant. He saved his immigrant pennies to build that statue. What are you doing? And Jesuit says, no, it's Vatican II. So then we have a fight and then he destroys the statue. That's literally what happened in thousands of parish. Yeah. Thousands of parishes yeah. in the name of Vatican II. That's the historical meaning of Vatican II. Okay. Now we have the the uh, theological va meaning of Vatican II, where people with PhDs and educations, like Fowler has an MA and he's in, trained in Vatican II. He's got an academic, he was trained by Mike Cirilla in Vatican II. He can give you this theological meaning of Vatican II. And that's where we can get a lot of goodness out of Vatican II, a lot of great things, as I discuss in my video in this sort of eastern catholic view of vatican ii about the traditional like, eucharistic ecclesiology of vatican ii but i think a lot of people when they discuss vatican ii they're either locked in a historical meaning where they talk all about these different things and they're not talking about and, and the the thing that the thing that makes this most acute is the most controversial document of vatican ii dignitatis humanae mm -hmm introduces the phrase religious liberty which has a totally different meaning historically than theologically completely different one is heretical and one right. is orthodox i would say because the one is talking about the traditional uh, and, and once again if you watch the jews series you talk about traditional catholic toleration of jews and heretics and this is that would be very very traditional going back to saint john Gregory the great mm -hmm. That sort of thing we talking about that sort of thing if we understand it that way but when you say the phrase religious liberty in 1965 that when you say that phrase it has a particular meaning that has already been constructed by a worldwide american empire psychological propaganda campaign that's been going on since 1945 because of well, the and, and beyond that and right. beyond so, that so even have, back, back to the enlightenment so, and, and so we have actual bishops who don't even understand what religious liberty means because right. they're living in 1965 and we're living into 2024 there's also a religious meaning religious liberty you know we have john courtney murray is the one who promoted this totally americanized version of liberty religious, religious liberty right. 